let's listen to Jordan Peterson tell us the truth about mass incarceration. The narrative in the United States about mass incarceration uh, as something that is per se bad, nobody looks at the actual numbers of who's in prison compared to the number of violent crimes being committed. It turns out you have, if you commit a crime in the United States, there is a 3% chance that you will end up in prison. So most... Yeah, like a uh, rapist when, uh, you know, only like 30% uh, of the uh, rape test kits are uh, tested and 70% 70, 70 of them are just thrown into storage. Most crime is going unpunished. You have to, you know, prison is still the Lifetime Achievement Award for persistence in criminal offending. You have to try very hard to get a district attorney to say, okay, I'm actually going to take your co case uh, to court. I'm not just going to plea, plea bargain you down. Or just be black and do nothing wrong, and you can get 400 years in prison for committing, uh, for, you know, being a part of a crime you never participated in. Um, in many places, it's not hard for uh, people to be thrown in prison for no reason. Uh, but you believe belong in prison, you have to have a very long record before he actually says, okay, I'm going to pay attention now. So, but if our prison population was not racially disparate, it is now about a third black, whereas blacks are about 13% of the population. Yeah, and if you, if you want to figure out the reason behind that, that's because of the war on drugs, which was used to throw... Uh, millions of black people in prison for prison labor. If there was not that disparity, nobody would give a damn about mass incarceration. That's a lie, and she obviously knows it. People would still uh, care about mass incarceration because the United States has the most people in prison, and people are tired of the prison industrial complex. So, I, she wants to talk about the truth about mass incarceration, and, and all she's doing at the moment is lying. And it's the same thing with the fact that there is a distribution of academic skills, the uh, way out in the high end, and we also have the gender issue, the sex issue, with males being overwhelmingly represented at both the high and the low end of math skills compared to females. But but just to repeat, I think in the United States, we would not be as troubled as we are by what you say are, are tragic uh, cognitive disparities, but for the race issue. Wow, uh, now, now she's going back, oh, we wouldn't care about mass incarceration if, uh, if, if it wasn't for you know, a large number of black people being in jail and we wouldn't care if, you know, black people weren't stupid. Uh, just more racism. And well, I looked into the race issue a lot when I worked at Harvard because we were, I worked with a student there on developing efficient assessment tests, both on the cognitive and the temperamental side. So for example, in a managerial domain, you want people who are who have traits that are associated with high intrinsic conscientiousness. And by the way, there's no racial differences in conscientiousness. And conscientious people are diligent and orderly and industrious and task-oriented and detail-oriented. And fundamentally, a conscientious person is someone who's capable of formulating and keeping verbal contracts. And it's the next best predictor of success in managing. So he's saying, he's basically saying they want managers that can follow orders, which is obvious. Gerald domains next to general cognitive ability. It's not a great predictor of entrepreneurial ability, by the way. And uh, we looked deeply into the racial literature at that point, and I was trying to account for the fact of these persistent racial differences. And one of the things I found, for example, that was very strange was that the differences between the general cognitive performance of North American Native Americans and Caucasians was much smaller than the difference between. Uh, 
this is th th they're just going a roundabout way of you know saying oh the IQ of these people are lower than the IQ of these other people so it's obviously some kind of race uh, performance between the black population and the Caucasian population and that's a that's a tough nut to crack because if you had to find a population that was as historically oppressed in the United States as the black population, the Native American population would certainly spring to mind. Now, uh, it's funny how he's actually admitting that the uh, black population has been oppressed in America, even though he denies any form of racism towards black people whatsoever. I think you could make a strong case for equivalence of outcast status, let's say, and certainly a strong case for multi-generational pervasiveness and continuing uh, multi-generational pervasiveness, but it, it doesn't manifest itself in the general cognitive ability difference front. And so that was disheartening to note that. More recently, um, we, we might point out that um, there are, there's plenty of evidence that environmental intermediation can produce improvements in general cognitive ability. The Flynn effect has demonstrated that, and it's quite clear that on average, people in the United States score quite substantively higher on IQ tests than they did 100 years ago, and a lot of that is a consequence of improved nutritional status, for example. And Yeah, which is why a lot of black people do worse in school and education and stuff, because uh, black people are poorer on average uh, because of systematic racism, and they have a harder time getting getting schooling, or the schools are underfunded because schools uh, funding is based on property taxes, and being that black people are um, historically, uh, on average, more poor than white people, the schools get less funding because of that. So. Yes, uh, educational uh, testing would be lower on in black people. And people like Jordan Peterson loves to use that kind of stuff against black people, trying to claim that black people are dumber than white people on average, when it's nothing but systematic racism that is causing the uh, differences in uh, testing scores. And IQ tests are nothing but a bunch of racist bullshit anyway, created by racist people to make it seem like white people, European white people, are smarter than black people when all of the IQ testing was based pretty much around white stuff. And the fact that information is at hand for pretty much everyone. And it's also the case that the racial gaps in general cognitive ability performance have been decreasing over about a 30-year period, and that they're actually much smaller in childhood than they are in adulthood. And that's the one point of optimism that someone very hard-headed might still maintain in relationship to the IQ literature looking. It's funny how the title of this video by Jordan Peterson is to treat about mass incarceration, and all he wants to do is, is talk about how he thinks black people are stupid. Added on the racial front is that at the age of five or so, the difference between Caucasians and blacks, for example, is something more approximating five points than the, say, 10 to 12 points that seems more standard by adulthood. And no one... Yeah, because as kids grow up, uh, white kids have better opportunities for education and stuff like that than black kids. So, yeah, um, there's going to be a... Uh, a uh, showable difference in uh, intelligence. One really knows why that is, why that gap expands across time. And it, it would. Uh, systematic racism and uh, how it has been made harder for black people to get a good education. It would be very useful to, at least in principle, to focus our sociological and psychological investigations into determining why that is. I suspect phenomena like fatherlessness play a role. Right, because that's the only reason why uh, black people have a harder time in society. Because of fatherlessness, not because of what he said previously, that black people are oppressed. Um, I also suspect that early literacy is relevant. You know, that in the typical middle-class family, a kid of 
forget race for a minute, if you look at the typical middle class family compared to the typical working class family, a typical middle class kid by the age of three or four has been exposed to uh, a veritable plethora of books. And yeah, because when the family's wealthier, they have an easier access to educational materials. That's quite obvious. And he's acting like he's like confounded by like the differences and stuff. Oh, why is it that wealthier people have a better access to education and resources and stuff? Hmm, I can't understand this. And and uh, semantic information compared to a working class kid, all things being equal. And the differences in exposure magnitude is absolutely remarkable, even by the age of three. And so there's still some places we might look if we were really interested in remediating the remaining differences in general cognitive ability. So, um, but... Okay, this video is stupid. All he's talking about, all he's doing is trying to say that black people are stupid. Fuck Jordan Peterson, he's a piece of shit.